Regardless of where you live on this planet, no matter what your nationality, the fact that the indefinite detention provisions of the NDAA are still on the books should disturb you on a fundamental level. If not, give it three minutes. The National Defense Authorization Act, which was passed in 2012 and extended in 2013 and 2014, authorizes the U.S. military to arrest anyone anywhere on the planet, to deny them access to a lawyer, and to detain them indefinitely without a trial. Furthermore, the U.S. government claims the right to do all of this in secret. No one would know where you went. You would just disappear. The right to a fair trial is gone. Without the right to a fair trial, you don't have any rights at all. Of course, some would argue that the NDAA only targets enemies of the United States, as if this would somehow make it okay. That defense doesn't hold water. It doesn't matter who the law claims to target, and it doesn't matter under what conditions politicians claim it can be used. If you don't have a right to a lawyer, and if you don't get your day in court, and if the government isn't even obligated to disclose the fact that they dragged you from your house in the middle of the night, then who is going to make sure that this isn't abused? The soldiers? The politicians? Come on. The power to make someone disappear without a trial is the power to make up any excuse that's convenient. Evidence is only needed when you have to prove your case in court. That's why we have courts. The protections codified in the Constitution were put there for a reason. But at this point, it looks very much like America is going to learn that lesson the hard way. Land of the free, right? You can put your hand over your heart, celebrate something that no longer exists, or you can be honest with yourself. That might be a bit painful. No one wants to believe that their kids are going to live under a military dictatorship. No one wants to see this coming. So most people put their head in the sand and do their best not to think about it. But those who don't always begin with one question. What can we do? The first thing you need to understand here is that our problem is psychological, not material. You have the means to take back your power. And you don't need a set of specific instructions. You don't need someone to hold your hand and explain your role. You don't need someone to give you permission. What you need is to turn off your TV, turn off your radio, put down the iPad, and ask yourself if you're going to be able to look your grandchildren in the eyes and tell them honestly that you did everything in your power to turn this around. Are you going to push this out of your mind because it's uncomfortable? Or are you going to convert that discomfort into a driving force? No one can make that choice for you. I'll tell you this much, though. If that thought itches in the minds of enough people, we'll figure out a way to scratch it. And if that driven feeling is fully established in your heart, you'll find a way to make it spread.